Hello, thanks for watching. So earlier on today, I uploaded a video showing you what's out and about today in 2023 for your Commodore 64, which included modern C64 games, where to get Commodore 64 games just being released, and other random websites where you can get information on new things all C64 related. So this video then is going to be about modern hardware for your actual Commodore 64 devices if you've got an original Commodore 64. So I'm going to break this video into different categories because there is a hell of a lot of things coming out on the C64 and there has been for a while. So I'm going to go from cartridges to user port expansions, even magazines. So check this video out and you might be surprised how much there is available for Commodore 64 in 2023. Okay, so at first we got the Turbo Chameleon cartridge, this is version 2. Yes, it's very expensive, it's currently 227.48 euros, and this is from Individual Computers, who's a very trusted website. I have one of these Turbo Chameleons myself, and you can even buy an expansion for this, which gives you Ethernet connectivity. If you look at the top just here, this is a VGA port. So instead of having an aerial connection, RF connection, you can plug this device into the back of your C64 expansion port and plug the VGA into a VGA monitor, which is gonna give you a nice clean picture. And you've also got an SD slot, which means you can just drag and drop your Commodore 64 games onto the SD card and pretty much plug this into your expansion port on your Mark 1 or Mark 2 64. It's a great device and yes, like I say, it's very costly, but it's also very cool. Uh, to make things even better with this one, so you can actually get another expansion for this and this is the docking bay. So what you do is plug the dock into the back of your C64. This V2 just here plugs into that docking port and to make it even cooler, you can actually get another cartridge which pretty much gives you internet access through Evernet. So this one is definitely a must if you've got the money that is, so check this one out. So up next we have got the very awesome Ultima 2 Plus cartridge, it's currently Plus. And these are available to pre-order at the moment from the Ultima64.com website. So these are very close and kind of similar to the Turbo Chameleon, but Turbo Chameleon's got a little bit more to it. So a lot of people out there using C64 like these cartridges. I've never owned one, but they've been very popular for a very long time. And as you can see from the website, you've got a range of different cases to buy one of these in. Personally, I like this transparent. Uh, so what Ultima 64 normally does, they will take pre-orders and then they'll create a batch of these cartridges and they'll ship them out to you and that's how it used to work. But like I said, I've never actually used one, but I know these are very much highly regarded in the C64 community. And up next we have the Backbit Pro Cartridge. Now granted this one's actually a new device to me. I've not come across this one up until my research just now. So this one looks in essence that it's just going to fit into your expansion port on your Mark 1 or Mark 2 model. And it's micro SD based. We have a reset switch just here by the seams of it. And this one's a bit cheaper than the Ultima or the Turbo Chameleon. And this one's obviously produced in America, I'm guessing this is US dollars. And just like the Ultima, this one's actually got an option of different case colours, but just red and black. And this one also comes with an adapter. Uh, by the seams of it, uh, the Backbit Pro cartridge not only works exclusively for the Commodore 64 computer, but it also works on a range of different micros. So if we go back to this adapter, we can see here what this actually works with. So everything from Sinclair ZX81 to IBM, and of course Commodore 64. So this one's definitely worth checking out. Okay, so next we have the 1541 diagnostic cartridge. Some of you might be wondering what's a 1541? Uh, some of you might be familiar with it. Uh, the 1541 is of course the Commodore 64 disk drive. So as we know, over time these disk drives become 
unreadable for discs being inserted and there was alignment issues. So one of these cartridges which just fits into your expansion port will read errors going wrong on your disc drive on your 1541. So if you do have a Commodore 64 and you've got a disc drive, a 1541 drive, plug one of these in and the diagnostics will check what's actually going on. For example, if your drive is out of alignment, it will show you what's going on and you can pretty much work from there. So I've owned one of these in the past and they are very good. In, you can buy this one from ProtoVision Games. And I thought whilst I was at ProtoVision, I'm also going to show you the Easy Flash free cartridge, which is again an expansion port job. And like it says here, the Easy Flash free, you can put different ROM files onto the one megabyte that it supports. You can put CRT images on, and you can pretty much program it to be your very own exclusive Commodore 64 little library for games. But it gets a bit more technical than that, but in essence, that's what it does. Uh, so it's 84 euros. But it's worth considering if you're on a bit of a budget and you want to play Commodore 64 games on a real machine. So check that one out also. So before I get into actual cases, I just want to make people aware that if you've got an old Commodore 64 cartridge and the case is a little bit grim, head over to this website just there. The links in my description is, is always. And you can find yourself brand new cases exclusively to fit your expansion port, your PCBs. And you can also order these in a range of different colours. Uh, they're pretty robust by the looks of it. The plastic on these are pretty nice. And I thought I'd just add that one in for anyone who wants to replace old Commodore 64 plastic cartridges cases. Okay, up next, and this is going to surprise several people out there. This certainly surprised me several years ago when this was announced. Uh, we have brand new C64C cases. These are from the original molds that Commodore used in the late 80s, mid 80s. And somebody's printed the cases and they're spectacular. I had a transparent case and these are from 59.50 euros, also from individual computers. You've got a choice of colors here. So we've also got the transparent and from uh, my own experience, the transparent is sexy. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say, it's a wonderful case and it's just wonderful. So if you've got a Mankey C64 case, or you just fancy a brand new case with a really cool color, head over to individual computers. I mean, check this out. Very nice stuff. Yeah, really good website and also a very nice replacement case. Whilst we're in the realm of cases, that type of thing, I thought I'd just show you that you can actually buy labels for your Commodore 64 systems. If you've got an old Commodore 64 logo, which is a bit busted, then you can head over to this website and these are 420 euros. So very nice and I've also owned one of these in the past and they're really robust and they fit very nicely onto the C64C case. So be sure to check that one out. And whilst you're over on this website, if you own a Mark 1 model or rather the bread bin, they also sell the power labels. And again, these are going to be made from the same quality as the badges I just showed you. So these are worth checking out as well. And these are just over 2 euro. So really nice looking stuff. And next up on my list, which I want people to know about, is the SD2 IEC Plus devices. So these fit into user ports on Mark 1 and Mark 2 C64s. And it is what it is. Uh, some say these are very unreliable. Some say they're pretty good. I personally owned one of these and I wasn't that impressed with it, but you've got mixed results. And from my memory, you can put .d64 files onto these and you essentially load up an operating system, I believe, which is loaded into the firmware on these devices. So it's worth checking out, and these certainly are for people on a very tight budget. So consider checking out the SD2 IEC. You can also pick these up on eBay as well, so just check those out. So again, just like just now, I've just come across your my research, a brand new, well, brand new to me, tape emulator. This one plugs into your user port, and by the seams of it, this is going to work on both Mark 1 and Mark 2, Breadbin and C64C machines. And as we can see, it does 
emulate a real tape, the 1530 or the 1531. So another one worth checking out. And from my understanding, um, it's a very good machine. I've also checked Lemon and the feedback seems to be pretty well for this one. As we can see, this one's currently sold out. And it's £49.90 or rather €49.90. Euros. So I'm heading back to Protovision. Now Protovision sell a lot of new devices and hardware for Commodore 64 machines. We have the 4 player adapter. So say for example if you want a 4 player game or something, they are around. You've obviously only got 2 ports on your C64 machine. So if you plug this into your user port on the back, it's going to give you two extra joypad ports or joystick ports which are 9 pin so this one's definitely worth checking out so go ahead if you're after a four player experience then take a look at this one and finally on protovision we have a wi-fi 64 card finally we have the wi-fi 64 yes that means you can connect to the internet don't expect to be using facebook or instagram or even youtube it's going to be very basic so this one actually comes with some papers which gives you different BBS boards so you can call it with this Wi-Fi 64. So a little bit like the Turbo Chameleon expansion, this one doesn't need a Ethernet cable to connect you. So it's worth checking out if you just want that experience of saying, yes, I've been online with my C64. Okay, so we're on to main boards or motherboards, and first up we have the C64 Reloaded Mark II. So as you can see, again, this one isn't particularly cheap, but it's from a very well-reputed website, Individual Computers. So as you can see, this board doesn't come with any of the chips, but it's got a little system in there where you can attach your own SID chip and your own MOS chip or whatever, but it's ready to go, and this is a brand new board, obviously. And if we just scroll down a little bit further, we can have another look at what this board actually comes with. So if you just read through here, it will tell you that it's got different character sets of ROMs. It's got stereo SID circuit configurable for three different popular addresses. Uh, it's even got 3.5mm stereo outputs. So it's pretty much the original C64 board, or the bread bin board rather, but without the chips inside, and it's obviously at upgrades such as the uh, stereo outputs. So it's worth checking out, and I know that this one sells out pretty fast, so if you want this one, I'll head over and buy it now. So not that it's in stock at the moment, this one seems to sell out very quickly as soon as they go back in stock. We have the Ultima 64. I can't really say much about this one, but as we can see from the picture here, it's pretty much a cut down C64 mainboard with the essential things in there such as the expansion port. We got some IC ports just here to put your own chips into and a couple of 9 pin joystick ports. I'm not sure what else this one comes with, but it's currently 248 euros, so it's pretty expensive, but it seems to be a very nice board from what I've seen on YouTube. So you've got yourself a Commodore 64 machine, maybe you bought yourself a brand new case, why go and buy yourself a manicured zip stick on eBay which has been used over and over again for 50 years when you can go to Ami64 and buy a brand new joystick, even a zip stick Super Pro. So check this out, they've got a lot of the classic style joysticks from back in the day such as the Cheetah Bug and this design, the Cruiser joystick. So again, this is a very trusted site, and we've even got a classic Atari style joystick for C64, and just beneath it, it will tell us that it's gonna be a nine pin, and it's gonna fit with Atari uh, 2600, Atari ST, 4800, Commodore 64. So this one uh, will fit in a lot of micros. And yes, in 2023, and for several years now, we have a magazine dedicated to Commodore 64. This is 364. So on their website, you can download digitally PDFs of this magazine, and they even print them off and they post them to you. They've also got extras on this website, so you can buy binders, what they sell, 
a little bit something like Retro Gamer Magazine where you could buy binders to put your magazines into. So 364 is going to give you all the information on your latest games, classic games, new hardware, old hardware, interviews with staff of Commodore, whatever. 364 is a very good resource if you need to keep up to date with what's going on in the world of C64. And whilst I'm talking to 364, this is a bit of a strange situation, this website. And if someone wants to tell me what happened, uh, just comment for me. So we've got Commodore Free. Uh, it's a free easing for fans of Commodore 64. And all of a sudden, back in 2017, as it says just here, March 2017, it went dead. Uh, if I go onto the magazine and I try and download a .pdf or even HTML, I get a dead link. However, if we go to the archive.org website, we can download these. So this is the e-zine itself, and uh, Nigel Parker, um, who I used to speak to actually through email in my Flimsoft days, um, he just seemed to have dropped off the face of the earth, I'm not sure what happened to him. So by the seams of it, the last Commodore 3 issue was number 96, and after that it just went dead. So if you're into news from around that time, this is a free PDF or HTML, well not actually HTML anymore, but you can download these in PDF format from the archive.org website and I'll leave the link in my description for this one. But there's some good news in there and you're going to find out lots of different information regarding new hardware, new games. I was in there myself in one of the issues, so go ahead and download these, they're well worth your time. Okay, as many of you probably are aware out there, there is a C64 Mini, which I briefly covered in my other video today. But this is a miniature version of the bread bin. The keys on it don't function, it's just purely there, just for looks. It comes with a joystick, some people say the joystick is bad. I didn't have any problems with mine. And there's already games preloaded on it, and you can also put your own games on it. It's always been updated with new firmware. You can update firmware for your USB method. And it's not a bad system, really, for a cheap little get around playing some C64 games. It's also got an HDMI port in it, so there's no need to worry about aerial connections or anything like that. And recently, within the last year and a half, two years, uh, the same company behind the Mini produced the C64. This is a full-size bread bin with functional keys. So it's pretty much the same as the Mini version of this, but it's bigger, obviously the same size. It's almost replicated the same size as a real bread bin model. Uh, same game, same firmware updates, and it's slightly more expensive. So check this one out, and of course you can program in basic on this and do all the things you would with an original C64. So I thought I'd leave the most expensive and the most intriguing last. This is the Mega 65. So anyone knows their Commodore history, we had some prototypes of the Commodore 65, but it never happens because Commodore went out of business back in 94. So we got a team of really skilled developers who came up with the Mega 65. Same case as the Commodore 65 was going to be, only this one says Mega 65 due to copyright issues, I believe. If we look at the back here, we got HDMI, VGA, Evernet, and a micro SD slot with an expansion port. We've also got two joystick ports there and a reset button. These are very, very expensive. And did I mention this has actually got a floppy disk drive in it too? If you want more information on the Mega 65, there's a lot of people on YouTube who's luckily got one. I don't, I can't afford one at these prices. But without a doubt, if you're a Commodore fan, this is a quintessential purchase. So that's about it. So that's about it. So hopefully someone out there has got a little bit of something which they didn't know about. I did my best to try and include most things, but the world of Commodore 64, there's so much coming out on it hardware-wise. So check out my other video which I published earlier on today, and that's going to show you modern C64 developers, what they're getting up to today, other websites which is going to introduce you into the world of Commodore here in 2023, and just do me a favour and hit notifications if you subscribe, it helps my channel really greatly. So until next time, Stay retro.